my name is Mia White and I am an intern at CSMG focusing on esports. Today I am joined by Jason Kirby from Generation Esports, which operates and powers High School Esports League or HSEL based in Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, Jason. Oh, thanks for having me. Gladly. To get us started, do you mind taking a moment to introduce yourself a little further and explore on your background? Yeah, sure. So my name is Jason. I'm the president and COO for Generation Esports. Uh, my background has you know, been in gaming for the last five years or so. Um, previously at a cloud gaming technology startup called Liquid Sky uh, that later sold to, to Walmart at the end of uh, 2018 and uh, joined the Generation Esports team about a year ago to help, uh, help us grow, get more partnerships, you know, get into more schools and uh, you know, continue to scale, raise money and you know, give, uh, make esports accessible to as many students as possible. Right, so what is your position or role at Generation Esports? Yeah, so I came on to be the Chief Operating Officer. Uh, that many, many different hats, whether it be signing larger partnerships, uh, helping optimize the team and you know, get the right people in the right seats to uh, be able to service more customers, be able to onboard more schools, more organizations, uh, do our partnership with the NJCAAE, uh, you know, basically come in and fill the gaps where we need them and then hire uh, the right people to, to take over and uh, run the different departments. You know, since I've joined, I want to say we've doubled, if not tripled the team in the last year. And uh, it's just exciting times, it's an exciting market, and um, you know, I'm here to help the, the team grow. Wow, that's great. Congratulations on so much growth. Thank you. Um, how did you get into esports personally, and why is it important to you? So <clears throat> esports to me, I got introduced to it back in my last company in, in gaming. I played games all my life, more casually with my friends growing up, from playing like things like Red Alert to Diablo, and uh, of course, you know the earlier games like Nintendo, GoldenEye being the most popular, like a, a nine-inch VCR combo TV, uh, where four of my friends would be up against the screen uh, on a split screen on nine inches. wasn't the wasn't the best experience, but you know it was fun. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, you know, so games have always been a part of my life, but I always kind of felt, uh, you know, never had the right gear, never had all the equipment to really participate. My parents were always upgrading. I never was. My parents didn't really support it, so I was kind of always missed out. Um, you know, I played traditional sports, played football for eight years, you know, got a lot of benefit from that in terms of teamwork, teamwork, collaboration, you know, commitment, uh, but also walked away with like five concussions and dislocated shoulders and broken bones and stuff like that. Uh, so kind of getting introduced to esports again later on in life uh, at my previous company when we were kind of powering some you know esports solutions and you know preventing cheating through cloud gaming. Um, I was exposed to just the mass opportunity that esports has, and it wasn't until I met the founders of you know uh, Generation Esports and the High School Esports League and seeing the impact that they had on these kids, where they have now you know we have now three thousand plus schools on the platform, but back then we had about a thousand and hearing these stories of these kids of how they didn't feel like they belonged, they didn't have, uh, you know, they didn't play traditional sports or they weren't doing too well in school, but then they heard about the esports program and they got like super excited. They started showing up for school again. They started getting better grades. They started being more motivated uh, to participate. They were bringing ideas to their teachers. Their teachers were blown away by, you know, little Billy who didn't participate in anything. was kind of, you know, kind of gotten in the corner is now a front leader and you know the leader of the organization, you know the esports club, and taking on all this extra responsibility. So what excites me and excites everyone at the company and gets us all to show up every day is just making sure we give as many opportunities to these kids as possible, because you never know which one's going to be the spark that you know helps be the the motivational factor in their life to take initiative and, and pursue different you know, career paths or you know uh, college readiness opportunities. And so that's that's something that really excites everyone here and, and why we're all motivated because we have that opportunity to impact those kids. I love that. I feel as though everyone has a place in the world, and I think that esports brings a lot of comfort to a lot of people. So that's great. Yeah. Many times when we hear all the roar of esports, we hear it in a collegiate setting. What made the HSEL decide to focus on high school students instead? Yeah, so there's a lot of fragmentation in the uh, collegiate space. There's all kinds of different leagues, different tournaments and all that kind of stuff. And they're a little bit more established in some uh, uh, 
some of the colleges are a little bit more established with their teams, more commitment. Um, but we realized like just like, you know, there's college football, there's also high school football. And there's a lot bigger market in high school in terms of volume of people, maybe not dollars because there's no NCAA or anything like that. And it's not really about the money. It's more about, you know, getting the kids involved and teaching them um, the value of you know, teamwork and commitment to their fellow uh, coaches and uh, players and just building a sense of community, building a sense of belonging, uh, contributing to, to their, their schools and just, you know, team spirit and whatnot. So there's all these like auxiliary benefits that come with just being a part of the team, but not necessarily like wanting to be the pro. You know, you always got your, you know, top one percenters that are just, you know, extremely gifted or going to be the best. Um, but you know, what about the other 99% of athletes and in our case, esports athletes that, uh, you know, can still benefit dramatically from this. And so our founders, you know, were, you know, in that kind of group of like, they were gamers, they wanted to get, uh, you know, more involved and they just, you know, there wasn't anything for them. Gaming back then is taboo. It's like, oh, you sit down and study, don't play video games kind of thing. And, you know, we're starting to see that shift, you know, with, Ugo winning, you know, $3 million in Fortnite, uh, you know, as a high school student, it really shaped, you know, the conversation around, you know, kids and, and parents, parents not understanding what esports is really all about now and that it's, it's, a, it's a real sport, you know, there's a lot of competition, there's commitment, there's practicing, there's teamwork, um, there's so much to it. And then, you know, parents, adults are now starting to realize that and they're stopped kind of causing so much friction for kids to adopt uh, video games and encouraging it more. We now have kind of these weekend warrior dads that are like, oh, hey, did you play your Overwatch matches? You know, like get back to Overwatch, you know, kind of thing. And they're learning how to play Overwatch so that they could keep up with their kids. Just like, you know, my dad brought me out to the football field to throw the football around type thing. It's just, you know, we're changing the dynamic. And uh, high school, we just feel is a massive opportunity for that. And that's also uh, why we're launching middle school esports league this fall. Uh, to support a bigger pipeline of kids and actually try to get kids when they're younger, uh, in particular, more girls involved. Um, you know, we see there's a significant skew of, you know, boys in high school, you know, which you know, can be expected, but it shouldn't have to be that way. And a lot of the reasons why the girls don't want to participate is because it looks like a boys club and they feel excluded. So if we get when, you know, girls are younger and there's less of these gender norm dynamics that exist at that age, uh, they'll be more likely to kind of build up momentum and build up a uh, sense of community. So when they go to high school, they can maintain that and continue to go. So we're changing up some of the games we offer for middle school to be more accommodating for young girls. Uh, we're going to be taking a lot more feedback uh, so we can kind of build a bigger pipeline that is more uh, kind of gender diversity and diversity as a whole. I think that's great. Good luck with the middle school uh, league. Yeah, like you said, I mean, esports is very inclusive, so I think it's great that you're looking to include more girls and just everyone in general. I think that's awesome. Um, like you said, though, the high school level doesn't really have the NCAA or the ECAC, so have there been any challenges in finding other high school teams to participate in games since a lot of times um, more college students are involved? Um, <clears throat> for us, it's, we've been growing pretty rapidly. Um, our messaging and how we approach the market being kind of more education first and diversity inclusion and, you know, more about the auxiliary benefits of bringing esports into the classroom, less so much about the video games themselves, mm -hmm. um, has been kind of our conversation starter for the de uh, decision makers. Uh, and it's a minuscule investment in comparison to other traditional sports or other kind of, you know, STEM oriented programming that, you know, schools are investing into. And this has helped, you know, prove to increase STEM learning and, you know, uh, STEM career readiness uh, by involving esports just through the inherent nature of having to learn about computers and having to learn how to, to work on the open internet, how to be better digital citizens. And so we're, we're seeing a significant amount of adoption, especially right now, like coronavirus is, or as horrible as it has been for this country and, and the world, uh, it started a new conversation in terms of, you know, maybe we should take esports a little bit more seriously. And it's helped accelerate uh, a lot of our, our plans and our initiatives uh, because schools realize like, well, one, for this time period, there's not really any social distancing safe sports outside of esports. Mm -hmm. um, so it's getting some positive momentum there, but it at least has sparked the conversation. So now people are at least looking at esports as a solution 
Um, and so we're getting districts and schools all across the country saying, you know, we want in, how do we get started? And then that's where we spend most of our time just educating and handholding and, you know, walking them through the process and providing all the infrastructure, software, and uh, structure they need to, to start a program. Yeah, definitely. I mean, esports is growing rapidly as it is, but coronavirus has definitely helped push it along the way, it seems like. Yeah. Um, when we think of traditional sports, we know that there is a long history and everyone loves them. Do you think that esports will have that same staying power? Well, you look at video games, you know, coming, like, coming to the scene in what, like the late uh, 70s and the 80s, and we're just starting to see more and more momentum. You know, there's 2.4 billion gamers across the world out of a 7 billion person population. Like, it's it's taken the world by storm. And the more we offer connectivity, accessibility, uh, more devices, it's just an incredible form of entertainment. And like Netflix is uh, cited saying their biggest competitor is not Disney Plus or Hulu or, you know, these other streaming platforms. It's Fortnite because they're, they're fighting over attention. And, you know, Gen Z... You know, they're getting entertained not just by playing games, but by getting live concerts in the middle of a, you know, a tournament type of, you know, opportunity that Epic is doing. And um, I think Epic's doing an incredible job of that level of engagement and constantly changing things and, you know, having all these stimulation, uh, things to stimulate the, the kids' brains uh, is fantastic. And so <clears throat> if you look at the future ahead of us and you look at Gen Z, you look at, Gen, you know, the millennial generation, and, you know, gaming is a huge part uh, of our lives and it's, you know, consuming more time than, you know, watching videos at this point. Uh, I would say YouTube's even threatened now at this point by, uh, you know, video games. There's still going to be a rapper, sure, but, uh, you know, in terms of that timeshare of how much time people are spending of their attention on different, you know, mediums, you know, gaming's just acquiring more and more and more of that timeshare because gaming's interactive. Uh, you get to participate. You get to create the story as you play, as opposed to being force-fed a fixed story that has a you know fixed outcome. And that's why Netflix has been, you know, played around with uh, the movie Bandersnatch, where it's kind of like choose your own adventure. They're trying to test this engagement activity where you can change the outcome. And that's essentially what gaming is. It's a 3D rendering engine that changes outcomes based on decisions. So uh, to, be, to be short, I think, yes, gaming is going to be here for a very, very long time. I think things that Blizzard's doing in terms of their regional um, structure uh, for for leagues is going to you know pick up steam. Whether they're successful with Overwatch or other games is to be determined. But the fact that they've been around for so long, it's it's going to probably continue to to grow and, and you know create more opportunities. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. It would be interesting to see how it continues to grow. Now, I don't know how much of a gamer you are, but before we go, we want to know what is your personal favorite game and why? Uh, I'm partially embarrassed to say, but right now I've been really addicted to Call of Duty Wars, and I'll probably get made fun of for that. But it's just really fun and easy for me to just hop into a Battle Royale match real quick, specifically the main rounds, because I'm just so busy working all day, and I just kind of need like a quick de stressor, which ironically, Warzone is a de-stressor for me because I just lose, you know, totally focused on, on the match itself, not distracted, and then I can go back to work. And it kind of gives me like a little energy jolt uh, to, to get back into my work day. So I'll probably play a quick match in the middle of the day and then go back to work and maybe play a night or something. But before that, I was playing um, Red, Dead, uh, Red Dead, and then I was playing uh, kind of more of the uh, story-based games that uh, kind of just kind of get lost into. Yeah, no shame in the game. <laughs> I heard <laughs> all great, so no worries. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? I just, uh, you know, we're excited about our, our partnership with CSMG, the NJCAAE, and potentially bringing on more conferences in the collegiate space and, and really helping kids from middle school all the way to college have, you know, kind of one platform that they can tie their identity to for their kind of like scholastic profession, you know, uh, esports career. And uh, you know, being able to get access to, to scholarships, we just paid out last week almost fifty grand in scholarships to our kids, wow. uh, which is like super awesome, and exciting. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're working with more schools, colleges that are trying to get recruiting opportunities and scholarships to kids. Uh, so it's just so much more than video games these days, and we're just really excited to be a part of that growth and helping facilitate it. 
Well, good luck to you, especially with the middle schoolers and the girls. I think that's great. And thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.